Коллеги, здравствуйте. Dear Мы можем colleagues, начинать. So, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Kristina Kostroma. I'm the first deputy head of the Department of Entrepreneurship and Innovative Development of the City of Moscow. And I'm really happy to welcome you at uh, our session titled uh, Urban Air Mobility. Our main task is uh, to make this session as practical as possible. This is presumably uh, and firstly about the initiative uh, to create create the air mobility piloting area in Skolkovo and also to create a special regime to establish the special regulation of um, piloting and of flights. And today we invited four groups of speakers that uh, directly influence this project. First and foremost, uh, this is Alexei uh, Fursin and Alexei Belikov, the people that actually have a direct influence on the project. They'll tell about the area itself, how it should be organized. The then we invited the future operators uh, of this area. Uh, then the third group consists of the customers uh, that will get the services from our mobility operators. And fourth, of course, we invited uh, the representatives of the regulating office because we cannot do without them. We have just one hour to discuss all this and I'll be moderating the session. I'll be tracking your time very precisely and sharply, so uh, we would like to get most of our discussion today and allocate most of our time to the discussion to elaborate the aspects that will help us to enforce the project. So, Alexei, let's start with you. You coordinate different projects across different areas in the field of technologies. And, well, perhaps the uh, area of uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicle is one of the primary ones here. Could you please uh, tell us why Moscow invests its time and money, what are the main goals, and uh, how do you see the development of this project? Okay, uh, Christina, I don't know where you got this information about the money, but uh, definitely we'll try to explain whether we can dream about uh, flights and piloting uh, in Moscow, not only dream about it, but to make it happen, whether we can make it happen uh, on the uh, Russian manufactured equipment and uh, with which software. So the main initiator of this project are the companies. Our main task as the rep representatives of the city is to create the conditions and the infrastructure. And we are the supporters here, just as the school Foundation, and we are very grateful for this um, active involvement in this project. First and foremost, I'd like to mention that uh, the market of uh, UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles, when it comes to both the business side and the economy, uh, of course, we always compare Moscow to. Uh, both uh, Russia and, of course, the largest mega cities in the world. So we see the exponential growth of this market. And it continues, the market continues to grow. And there are some projections that it will persist, it will continue. Why? Because the demand for uh, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, actually is coming from absolutely different fields of economy. Today we are not only talking about some drones that can uh, shoot uh, some pictures from a wedding, but it is also about the monitoring purposes, the rescue purposes, and some particular specific tasks. Also, uh, one cannot forget about the purposes of uh, entertainment, which um, already make use of the unmanned aerial vehicles. So we take a look at the largest uh, mega cities and the in the largest countries. Christina has already mentioned that a lot will depend here on the regulator. Of course, we take the cue from the best practices of other countries. We take a look at how other countries regulate the piloting activities as well as the creation of some specific areas where uh, it can be done. Also, it is about the permissions and permits. And so we see some practices like this in the Republic of Korea, in the US, as well as in Singapore. But we, as always, are very much impressed by the scale that is present in China. 
because as of now, this is uh, the areas that are already used for the purposes of piloting, testing, operation of uh, different types of drones. Uh, they have about 13 uh, piloting areas uh, in China. And if we are concerned about how a drone will act and react while it's flying above walking people, then the piloting areas that are already present in China actually cover the territories uh, that um, can serve uh, as territory for about uh, 109 million people. So this is a trend uh, that will persist. While uh, and why am I talking about piloting zones? Because currently the system is being set up. And this is uh, not only about drones as uh, they are, but it's also about uh, cargo carriage as well as a passenger transportation. And for us, it's uh, a decision like uh, for a large mega city uh, with a very complex traffic situation. This is one of the ambitions and goals for us. We do understand uh, that the second part that uh, we need for this piloting areas is uh, the creation of infrastructure as well as the vehicles themselves as well as uh, the software added by the driving force of any progress, which is the people, the professionals, the engineers, the creators, the designers. So here you can see some figures that uh, demonstrate uh, or reflect the real situation. Uh, you can compare us uh, to China and the US. Does this mean that uh, we should stop at this? No. If we don't make the decision on the promotion and the usage of this uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles in the air mobility, then, well, perhaps we will tomorrow start to replace them with some imp imported uh, technologies. So the concept of the creation of urban area mobility piloting area in Skolkovo, this is what Christina mentioned, and uh, Mr. Belikov will um, elaborate on the structure, on the application process, how we will proceed. We'll also take a look at the Russian projects that are currently ongoing. The first. Um, application is uh, from Tomsk and the second project uh, is from some uh, very far territories such as uh, Kamchatka and Chukotka. But Moscow uh, will not be quite similar uh, to these projects. This is one of the largest markets where it comes to not only governmental services and commercial services, but Moscow encapsulates uh, the largest number of companies that, of course, cannot be compared with the international systems on the one hand. But on the other hand, these are the backbone companies for us. We don't have any other companies. We don't have any other platform for this. So, okay, I'll not mention the obstacles here, but uh, what I would like to mention is is that we have a plan which is to involve all the governmental entities that should approve the, the piloting area. We hope that these entities will help us and support us in this respect. Then we also want to create uh, the infrastructure. Alexei will talk about it, as well as uh, we are aimed at creating the software. And uh, what's most important is that uh, we want to, to enable the developers and the designers of these uh, aerial vehicles. Uh, we want them to live uh, in this uh, urban area mobility piloting area. This project hasn't yet got uh, the legal status, but uh, we are creating already the infrastructure. And on the, the next or last slide, you can see the QR code. If you are among maybe um, the designers or creators or developers of unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, please uh, scan the QR code and uh, reach out to us because you can be the first ones. And uh, I'll get back very shortly. Unfortunately, here we don't have any children in the audience today, but I'd like to mention another project that is 
primarily about another issue that we are facing. On the 4th of June, so just in a couple of days, we will organize a national competition, uh, Ira Robotech, and um, children and adolescents will compete in creation as well as programming and uh, creation of uh, aerial vehicles. But unfortunately, uh, we only have um, a couple, uh, sev several uh, Moscow teams and about seven cities which will uh, also participate uh, in, world, in Russian uh, World Cup. And uh, people, uh, guys uh, from military colleges will come. And who uh, are these people who will work uh, in such uh, areas? Uh, do, ha do, do we have a, specif a, spe a, special, a specialist a specialization like this if we don't have such specialists? That's all. Maybe uh, we should also speak about it uh, now at this session. Thank you very much. Alexey, you are the head of the team uh, of um, uh, experimental legal uh, mode, um, all um, concepts linked with physical infrastructure, methodology, uh, who uh, will fly here, how they will fly here. And the participants of um, uh, uh, this session are very interested in your presentation. Could you open up details how mechanics will work um, in order to attract more participants? Colleagues, uh, can you give me my presentation? While they are doing it, I can say, why is Kolkova? Uh, adopted the initiative of the Moscow government, and we rolled up our sleeves. Uh, we started to create this zone. You know that inside of the ecosystem of Skolkova, there is a small ecosystem which is which consists of companies, producers um, uh, of um, um, uh, flying vehicle systems, uh, also companies um, which um, uh, do intellectual systems of management. I'm confident uh, that uh, mm, it's very promising. Uh, and um, if we want to develop this ecosystem within Skolkova, uh, we launch um, uh, this joint uh, project uh, and uh, uh, to show you uh, key business cases in order uh, to reach the scale which we need. I won't repeat uh, other speakers, but um, uh, the most of the companies which are on the slide are pre pre present here. And um, inside of uh, Skolko Foundation, there are about 50 companies, producers of aviation systems. On our, uh, on our platform, we have customers which will, who will use the services, uh, very large retailers as Zvermark, Azon, and Wildberries, large logistic companies as Pochta of Russia, Post of Russia, uh, who are leaders um, uh, and uh, also, who work with Rosatom, uh, Rostech, um, and um, some other large uh, uh, consumers. When we combine um, demand and uh, supply, we'll reach uh, this effect um, on market development, which uh, I have already mentioned. What is our plan? At the territory of the Skolko Foundation, uh, we need to create uh, the zone of testing of um, unmanned uh, vehicles, and within the framework uh, of the zone, we'll have the mode which will allow us uh, uh, to um, uh, test services uh, uh, to use uh, flying um, vehicles within the city landscape. Uh, we'll test uh, such services within uh, the uh, urban infrastructure makes it unique and valuable because um, in accordance with calculations which we have now, analytics, uh, uh, the demand uh, is somewhere next to consumers. 80% of consumers uh, live uh, in Russian Federation and uh, they're somewhere close to cities and big cities. That's why it's very important to test all services in places where we expect to see <coughs> their operation. 
and where we have the most active demand. But at that, we understand that uh, unmanned vehicles uh, in air, uh, in city landscape, um, uh, also be as high risks um, than we uh, can see in forest areas. And that's why we plan to work at some technological solutions to decline such risks. I would like to say a few words about uniqueness of our pilot zone. Uh, there are several um, physicists. First, well, firstly, a lot of assortment of drones, uh, heavy and lightweight, a lot of variety of cases, business models, which uh, we could test here. And as I've said, um, flights within land, uh, within city landscape, and the participants um, will be all services, uh, finances, uh, tax. Um, um, infrastructure support uh, with, which exists um, within the framework of uh, Skolkov Foundation. What um, equipment and technological solutions uh, would we like to probe here to decline um, the risks um, of um, having these unmanned vehicles uh, in air? Uh, first of all, navigation, um, uh, monitoring. And as uh, we think, it's uh, essential here to have sustainable um, a continuous connection between operator and drones um, and between control room. And as it seems, the key technological direction is to use 5G network because 5G network, LTE network, are already within the city landscape. This infrastructure is in place already. And if we want to manage um, this system to, ma to monitor drones, uh, is uh, very beneficial. Uh, also, uh, different other types of monitoring on the basis of uh, radars, the technology of navigation at night time, of accurate landing, autonomous navigation, and so on. A very important uh, element of our uh, zone will be a digital platform. Uh, here also we work um, at different technologies linked with uh, um, unmanned uh, vehicles assortment uh, things um, linked with data processing about flights and some other technologies. For this, uh, we'll need on land infrastructure. On, uh, so you can see here the examples um, in the third item. You can see uh, the um, list of such equipment. Uh, also, we have uh, some other resi some residents of, Skol of Skolkovo who are at the exhibition. Cases <coughs> which we would like to work at, uh, and um, from light uh, uh, till uh, till difficult cases, uh, dozens of flights in 2021, 20, 2022 already took place, um, and these flights uh, um, took place uh, in accordance with very. Um, understandable um, cases, video monitoring of construction sites. Um, the next stage is using of um, lightweight drones, um, less than 30 kilos for delivery, and then uh, uh, more heavyweight drones. Uh, also, uh, we want to, s to have the service of air taxi, uh, transportation of people um, through with the help of uh, unmanned uh, unmanned uh, uh, air vehicles. And this service will be breakthrough uh, for changing of uh, city economy. I would like um, to now speak about our routes. We plan uh, to create um, uh, several points of delivery at the territory of Skolkovo. They will be located near very big hubs. Uh, and where users um, uh, are situated Sberbank, Skoltech, Nobel, Technopark, uh, and Hadassa. Most also more maybe will uh, have the central hub, logistic uh, hub. Uh, logistic companies will deliver their parcels there, and uh, the last mile will be uh, till those hubs. Uh, it's very important to work at uh, user a journey, experience, use experience, how the service can be, the service of delivery can be implemented. So the user opens, uh, takes it. The statistics, this uh, journey is important for us. And that's why we want uh, to interact actively uh, with uh, the customers of such services. 
And uh, here also we have um, uh, services uh, of uh, construction sites. Um, uh, that's the, uh, prin the key principles. Uh, uh, the key principle is scale up. Uh, if if uh, the for creation of functional and functioning of testing zone, um, we want to scale up such uh, things um, in Moscow and another metropolis is another regions of Russia, and uh, the principle number two. Uh, this is the principle of open platform and. Uh, uh, so-called um, federativity on land system and uh, on board um, equipment uh, will help us to test a lot of um, um, solutions. Uh, this concept which we have now does not have any specific solutions and protocols. We are ready to test all of them. And for that we plan uh, uh, to invite uh, other companies which uh, work uh, at this market. Thank you very much. Alexei, thank you very much. Um, I hope uh, the participants now uh, understand this more. Uh, Ivan Vasilich, now the next question to you. Uh, when um, with the team from the Skolko Foundation we discussed our target audience, who <coughs> can be and will be the main participant of the experiment, uh, we uh, did not uh, speak about very specific uh, customers. Mm, and um, 10 out of 10, uh, these are the companies uh, which are developers, bus operators of services, productivity companies. And Alexei Anatolyevich also showed the growth rates, uh, uh, the revenue, and it, it seems that Aramax company uh, conforms um, all these requirements. You are a target audience of work within the framework of the zone. What requirements demand you have um, uh, when working with this zone? <coughs> Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, I'm very glad to see you all here. There are so many familiar faces, but also not some some unfamiliar. And uh, you know, the world is um, very close, uh, but still, uh, I can see uh, a lot of um, new resources here uh, who are interested in this topic. That's why uh, good afternoon to all of you. Aramax um, recently is not uh, only a company operator, but also a producer and developer. Within the framework of the development, we uh, have to do a lot of a, a great deal of systems, uh, additional systems for our unmanned uh, um, air craft vehicles, um, uh, which uh, can make them uh, safe. I would like to thank the government uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, going on, these projects are going on, and we now can uh, work with our potential customers, speak about operation, commercial operation. But in this, um, uh, for example, aircraft vehicles, um, which um, platforms which are already working in the north, uh, uh, this is not so important regarding safety. Uh, when we're speaking about uh, uh, aircraft vehicles in city landscape, uh, of course, there are so many different additional questions. Uh, and uh, here uh, we can uh, work uh, uh, at our new technical solutions, uh, as uh, the other speaker said, our uh, so-called blue dream is uh, to reach to aero taxi. Aero taxi, from the point of view of people, transportation will need a significant increase of uh, safety improvement of safety, which um, can be provided with the help uh, uh, of some additional questions, um, navigation. Uh, and uh, now we also will, we are doing works, not only us, but other developers also with the support of uh, appropriate um, foundations uh, on development of such um, systems, technological vision, which allow us uh, uh, to navigate in space, not only through uh, GPS or navigation, but also uh, uh, through um, defining um, uh, some um, close objects in uh, in space. Um, uh, it's called technological vision, automatic landing, 
uh, and um, if in remote regions uh, we uh, can calculate, we can um, account on uh, um, la uh, land of uh, uh, platforms 20 by 20 uh, and um, in city uh, landscape uh, the space is smaller and this uh, space will be smaller of course if we want to land um, and take off uh, safely from them we need automatic uh, the system of automatic uh, uh, landing which uh, will use um, uh, some kind of on land additional infrastructure uh, different sensors on this uh, platform and the system of technical vision um, will be start um, started uh, uh, from these uh, systems, uh, the uh, uh, other speaker uh, spoke about 5G network, which we can use um, for uh, the uh, uh, radio connection. And also, we are working at it, uh, and we'll work at, at this in this zone. Um, speaking about us as an operator, we can't understand how to arrange it. Uh, for example, uh, the delivery of cargo in closed zones, um, how will we install uh, local modes, uh, as we can see on the slide. Um, uh, so, for example, Vnukova Airport. The issue of this um, compactness for us as for developer and operator are relevant, and we'll, uh, we'll be working at it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the team of developers, I can say that uh, at present many questions are under uh, design, under <coughs> alignment, and we have a lot of different uh, um, uh, different acts uh, which we need to confirm at the Church of Skolkova. I speak this to you. We are ma we are very open uh, to for proposals. Um, this is a joint project which we need to do, uh, and we need to cooperate together uh, with business and target audience. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to ask uh, the question to you, Alexander. Uh, you have a role of software developer, but you are also a target audience uh, for whom this zone is. What uh, uh, needs do you have? Um, and um, you said also earlier that the market will not be developed, will not be developing if uh, we take permissions. Uh, uh, for flights uh, during 28 plus days, from from the point of view which works for this com for this market, how do you think? Uh, what are the basic parameters uh, do you have now, in order to develop this market uh, with uh, the rates which are in, existing in the world now? I would like to say that Moscow is um, so huge. Uh, that a number of mission types uh, which uh, we can use uh, um, uh, is uh, huge. And uh, I uh, think that uh, <coughs> solution of three tasks uh, lacks speed, uh, can be, uh, comfort, and stimulus. Uh, what do I mean here? Speed. Uh, as you've said, uh, speed of um, approvals and alignments should be much more quicker than it is now. And uh, it's uh, common knowledge. If we want to take off uh, within the landscape, city landscape, we need to have alignment uh, from, from the city administration. And uh, it can take 25 days on average, um, and uh, for quality breakthrough in commercial use uh, of aircraft vehicles, it should not be days, but hours, you know, not even days. And uh, secondly, convenience, um, the end user has to be has to have a tool which um, will allow him uh, to solve a business task quickly software a uh, parking of moscow for example who live in moscow who have been living in moscow for a long time you know uh, this parking problem uh, uh, a lot of penalty uh, evacuation and so on and so forth uh, and uh, uh, it was really a, a disaster but when we uh, received a very convenient tool uses applica good application, uh, users started to use um, 
um, parking not chaotically, but uh, in a convenient way. And now you can see that now we don't have so much traffic jams on roads and don't have so much mess regarding uh, parking lots. And, the th and thirdly, stimulus, why should we fly? It's not um, a fact that we need um, uh, to take off and to get somewhere. We need to, uh, to fulfill a business mission. And this business mission should need uh, two participants, um, ex executors uh, and those who order. Now at the market we have a lot of uh, um, people like this, but they um, don't interact uh, with each other. They don't know how to find each other. And our uh, company, Fledrome, uh, uh, is uh, creating a marketplace which will allow business uh, to find uh, executors, um, performers, um, uh, and also customers, uh, and then uh, we'll build up a bridge uh, on their operative interaction. And when a uh, customer uh, finds um, performer or executor, uh, this executor will um, perform um, this business mission, and we help him uh, uh, to make an application, automatically define what uh, the route can be uh, and uh, what approvals, documents he needs um, to generate. And our system uh, helps in all this. And then um, this is uh, practically the same approach as regarding packets, packets of Moscow. We should not uh, think about uh, kinds of documents which we need to send because users um, take off uh, not only uh, to spend 90% of time uh, uh, for approvals. He needs uh, to solve some kind of business mission. That's why we need a tool. But um, incidentally, uh, now in Moscow, flights are possible, and uh, uh, it's possible. But uh, in the majority of cases, these are uh, flights uh, with the state purposes. Uh, and there are very many of them. Not everybody knows maybe about this them. And we spoke with, with the state inspection on real estate. They have a fleet of their drones, their own drones, and they are always flying around Moscow. These are huge um, spaces which they cover. For example, during this year, they are planned, um, I think within the first four months, they plan to fly 1,200 uh, 3,000 square meters, and this is, uh, this is uh, quite a lot. And last year, uh, drones covered all Moscow. Yes, you can fly, but uh, it can be reduced to uh, the fact that this is a technical flying device, and you need to have an experiment how it will fly and whether it's safe or not. Skolkovo is one of uh, uh, the um, versions where we can uh, uh, check it. We don't have uh, high rises here. Uh, we don't have uh, so... Uh, no, we don't have high density of people here, and there are many IT companies, producers, uh, and the interest uh, from the point of view of administration of Moscow City is huge. Uh, and uh, here there are all conditions uh, to test all business missions, but not high because um, uh, still not far we have Vnukovo. But for experiment, for tests, we have all conditions. That's why, if, as, as a participant of this uh, uh, project, um, uh, we are ready uh, to implement uh, these initiatives. Alexander, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, is uh, quite a cool uh, model. Uh, and uh, you have a good comparison with um, uh, parking lots uh, of Moscow. Now uh, we have uh, uh, Denis Barisic. Uh, please, uh, can you come to a stage uh, or uh, the post of Russia? Uh, you uh, can. I think uh, you are, uh, you, for you, this technology is very important. You are not only a participant of the experiment in Tomsk, Chukotka, but you are the main um, customer. And uh, within the framework um, of big territories, it's clear, uh, big space, uh, long space, uh, heavy cargo, population, um, uh, colleagues mentioned all this, and uh, speaking about the post, uh, what uh, tasks do you have? And um, where do you see yourself here? 
Thank you very much for your question. First of all, what we are doing now uh, in remote regions of Russia, we are doing this together with Aramax. Uh, this is uh, a small market so far. There are some technologies which um, we heard of. We'll uh, test them, and this. Uh, uh, these technologies are not enough to provide for flights uh, within the city in Moscow, but um, uh, some part of technologies which uh, we uh, will work at there within uh, the next three years will be scale up, scaled up. Uh, and um, speaking about uh, uh, the uh, uh, Skolkova, um, airspace. Alexei already spoke about several services. Uh, the services uh, which um, are planned to be done in Skolkovo, these are ready products uh, which, uh, as uh, demonstrators of the end service, can be shown here and can be scaled up. Uh, so um, uh, some uh, uh, linear objects uh, or long-term objects. Of course, we understand that the, the territory is small and it's uh, difficult to find business here. Um, but um, for post of Russia. Um, but at the first stage, uh, it's very important to work at the technological packet uh, of um, um, city mobility. The first um, thing which uh, is necessary are cargo, so then we transfer to people, and the first uh, as uh, light weights, uh, and then we go to heavier weights. From the point of view of technology, the channels of navigation and management, we need to have uh, two, three means of navigation and uh, management. Uh, 5G is excellent. Machine vision should be doubled. Generally speaking, uh, and uh, the second stage, uh, this is scaling up. We want flights. At the, at the second stage, we want the flights. Uh, <coughs> Uh, not uh, not to have um, above the heads of the of the pe of, of people, uh, but somewhere maybe um, above railroads, uh, forests, uh, rivers, and uh, some others. Uh, not where there is a high density of people uh, to decrease the risk um, of um, this. This is the horizon of 100 to 100 meters. Uh, this is very close uh, uh, to uh, this. Area. Area, which will be in Skolkova, because um, if you are higher, this is uh, more risk. Uh, but if we go further, so the first uh, stage, the next stage will be minimizing risks for people who are on land. And uh, it means um, proper routes, layout of routes, dynamic segregation, um, and um, time segregation, uh, uh, and uh, some narrow uh, um, corridors. And then in the future, we'll develop all technologies in cargo, so then in people for in, at such uh, territories. And Alexander mentioned about it. Uh, we're planning to test the systems uh, there and then now, here. On the whole, I can say like this, uh, yes. Uh, Speaking about scenarios which we can have, uh, we can make uh, uh, we can make this uh, for hours. Like if we're speaking about logistics, uh, uh, it's uh, useless. If we speak also about the last um, mile, and our customers are the buyers are zone marketplaces uh, which are. Um, uh, so uh, which um, now have uh, this standard services exit delivery and we are thinking the options how to do this not next day but four hours three hours we don't speak again about the second uh, the last mile in Moscow and uh, of course uh, their drones will be expensive and uh, risk there will be a risk but within the territories of adjoining uh, places in big Moscow region. 
we can um, already have such services um, and they can have, can be commercial but for this we need technological package which we are speaking about we can we should um, practice it we should test it within a skolkova airspace and um, and um, uh, so um, uh, the peak of this pyramid uh, is air taxi and uh, this is the next stage I think uh, it will uh, have the same uh, uh, way first um, um, cargoes um, and uh, to uh, fly in uh, regions where there are minimum risks uh, uh, and uh, all the systems of backup uh, so <clears throat> uh, to uh, secure um, people who use uh, these services. But our developers also are working at this. Thank you very much. Uh, now let's applaud our speaker. It was so, uh, it was so uh, uh, well structured. Uh, you already mentioned our partner, customer, um, but um, I think you also have a partnership with Azon Company, and now we have Azon Company online. Uh, so, Alexey Vladimirovich, are you with us? Hello, Alexey, can you hear us? Yes, uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Okay, so uh, we already heard about the demand for the unmanned aerial vehicles. I know that uh, Ozone could also be a customer for the delivery of small packages, uh, delivery to Skolkovo. Here we actually have a lot of operators that could uh, render you the services in demand. Could you please um, describe what you need, what are the promising um, aspects of the introduction of unmanned aerial vehicles uh, in Skolkovo. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, it's a bit too early to say that uh, we've already described uh, our demand. Uh, we are currently studying the project in Tomsk. Why we are taking a look at Tomsk? Because when it comes to the problems connected to delivery services, we believe that uh, indeed uh, Tomsk is a good area for the application of drones because there are some areas, residential areas, to which it's quite difficult now to deliver any packages, any packages, postages, etc. So, uh, indeed, this is a good territory for the drones application. If we talk about Skolkovo, perhaps we should take a look at the economy of the project. Well, the experimental legal regime or framework is about testing the opportunity as itself. I mean, the technology, kind of a testing of new norms. But we believe it's important to, once again, I'll repeat myself, take a look at the economy. We would really like to see it in detail, and we have such a pre-agreement uh, regarding this. I think it's an open secret that a cargo delivery in uh, densely populated areas with the help of a person on a bike uh, or autonomous um, riding vehicle, it's uh, a cheaper opportunity and uh, I think uh, nobody has uh, any illusions about it. So when it comes to practice, let's take a look at the particular parameters, how it will look like when it comes to the speed, when it comes to the pickup point, to the delivery point, how it should be equipped and supported when it comes to the infrastructure, who will bear costs uh, for these kinds of delivery. If we see that in addition to marketing effect it, or the marketing effect is added by the economy effect, then we are actually a company that is uh, actively using the advanced technologies, then we'll be really happy to be part of this project. Okay, Alexei, thanks a lot. We are waiting for you as a, a participant uh, of this experimental legal framework um, as a customer. Okay, thank you. And now I'd like to first help uh, you uh, 
Andre, uh, you and your team, we're really grateful that you considered the application from the um, Moscow City. Thank you for taking such a close look at it. So the question is, uh, you've been a very important regulator regarding the projects in Tomsk and uh, on Kamchatka. Currently, you are supporting our application. So as a regulator, what do you think is the difference between these uh, two frameworks? And what aspects should we take into account? Because we have a lengthy process of approval ahead. So what should we do to get the successful approval of our application? I'll probably borrow your mic because mine is out of order. Okay, good afternoon, dear colleagues. First, I'd like to thank my supporters in this, uh, Yana and others. These are the leaders that are taking care of the legal framework in the field of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. As to the novels of this experiment and as to the ways to coordinate. These are the issues that are addressed by the Ministry of Economic Development. Why we are taking care of this? Well, because we are doing the digital economy project and we are doing the legal regulation uh, in the field of digital economy. And so where, as Alexei said, one needs to test a technology, to demonstrate the proof of concept. We believe that we need to get the public ready, I mean to prove that this is safe. And we also have to identify the legal gaps. Because when the time comes and uh, we stop considering it as an experiment and uh, we set it as a permanent framework, then we need to definitely convince the public and the State Duma and everybody else that this technology is proven and safe. So the experimental legal framework, it is about the time. Uh, the time period here is limited to three years, as usual. And uh, it is also about the testing and limited geography. We've also started our work with the post of Russia or Russian posts uh, in uh, in Tomsk and uh, Chukotka, Kamchatka, etc. And so I believe that if we take a look at the world practices, then well, of course, everybody starts with flying above some unpopulated areas such as forests and fields, etc. And based on our experience of cooperation with our colleagues, as well as on our experience of uh, already existing experimental frameworks, of course, we are taking a look at the best practices that exist in the field of operating above populated areas. Of course, we have to address the issues raised by the Russian Aviation Agency as well as the Ministry of Transportation. And then comes the story of the passenger transportation, aerial taxi, for example. My colleagues have already mentioned it. Uh, well, we've uh, breathed in uh, this um, future already. But, uh, for example, if we take a look at China, I think they started to experiment in uh, a cluster in Japan because the infrastructure was ready so they didn't just start flying above uh, their own citizens um, from the very beginning. It was also a step-by-step -step process. We see the involvement from the team, we see the inspiration coming from all the participants and I think it will help us. I think it, the key here is the incremental approach, because if we take a look at the Yandex unmanned vehicles experiment, we will see that there is a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, because on the second stage, for example, we made the driver just take the hands of the uh, steering wheel. 
because still uh, the driver is in the vehicle uh, with the button that can be pressed if something goes wrong, uh, but the hands of the driver are off the steering wheel. And then the next stage is uh, when the driver is on the passenger seat, uh, and the next stage is when a driver is uh, going after the unmanned vehicle, etc., etc. So it's important for us. And yesterday we met in the evening, and once again we confirmed that each stage of our progress should be logical when it comes to the technology as well as the control or over the vehicle as well as the means to regulate it. So we respect the colleagues that um, continue to work in this area and that are searching for some solutions, especially in these difficult times. And I'm sure that we'll be able to do it faster than other agglomerations. Also, thanks to our great team, the support from our leaders, as well as the best practices that we've got in the field of uh, the unmanned delivery in some unpopulated areas. So I would like to express uh, our readiness to support, of course. And up until Friday, we plan to discuss the draft plan. And next week, uh, we will send these materials out to our colleagues in federal ministries. I think that uh, we will give them about a week and a week and a half for consideration. And after that, we will discuss it and continue discussing it with other stakeholders. Yes, uh, Anatoly, thanks a lot for this uh, contribution. Uh, you've mentioned the federal ministries. So, uh, Denis, uh, I want to ask you today, uh, everybody, of course, mentioned the issue of safety. You are one of the regulators uh, in the field of um, the aerial transportation. So I can't help but asking what are the issues that you could predict in this field, uh, because when we come to the stage of approval, getting comments uh, within working groups, etc., what should we take into account? What you as a regulator see as a critical aspect? Thank you for this question. First and foremost, I would like to mention that uh, quite recently we've approved a concept on the integration of um, the aerial vehicles into our common aerial space. And one of the most uh, important topics that uh, this concept addresses is that uh, this experimental legal frameworks should use the technologies that are enshrined in the plan for this particular concept that I mentioned. So those colleagues that are working on the drafting of this uh, experimental legal framework should not only lay foundation in the form of cases to address their business tasks, but they also have to come up with a technology that has been tested, that has been proven scientifically, and that could be brought to life. That's the first thing that I wanted to mention. Secondly, Skolkovo is uh, an area that is quite close to Moscow. And uh, it is also the area quite close to the Vnukovo International Airport. And uh, when it's an open secret uh, for everybody who flies from this airport, as Alexei mentioned today, perhaps we should take into consideration a question of uh, developing the technologies here in Skolkovo, but operating the vehicles somewhere else in some other areas where aerial space is uh, less dense, <coughs> including uh, different uh, urban areas with high buildings, with low buildings. We will continue to test these technologies with uh, more heavy vehicles and uh, with more complex tasks. Once again, I'd like to repeat that uh, we as a state ATM corporation do understand that without this experimental legal framework, 
We cannot speed up the process of the unmanned aerial vehicles uh, development, but one of our priorities is safety, the safety of people on the ground as well as the safety uh, in the air. So we are operating here the same space, airspace. We do hope that the government will approve the experimental legal framework and then the unmanned aerial vehicles will be operating in the same air. So we do support uh, experimental um, legal framework, but uh, one needs to remember that, uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's a very like sad phrase, but any air transportation regulation is uh, written with blood, so to say, but we have to be really careful here and to uh, prevent it and be very thoughtful while writing experimental um, legal framework. Okay, so um, now I'd like to also ask one of the participants of uh, our project. Currently, we discussed the concept of involving you uh, in two roles. The first one is uh, the, the certification center as well as the as a role of a training center. Could you please tell us about the competencies uh, that you currently have uh, about uh, the areas in which you work and how these could be applied in Skolkovo? Yes, thanks a lot. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. So we are thinking about the future. Uh, we've got a new rector in our university, the Moscow Aviation Institute. Of course, the institute has changed quite significantly, and uh, it has um, become quite an active um, participant in the framework of our education. And uh, the unmanned aerial vehicles is one of the areas that we've been actively developing. We also work on the new technologies and training of personnel in this respect. No breakthrough is possible without qualified uh, pilots, engineers, developers, designers, etc. I'll be very brief because the topic is a very extensive one. We analyzed the labor market, we did the HR forecast, And of course, we analyzed uh, some professions that are quite next to us, such as in IT, etc. And so last time, there was a competition named uh, Priority 2030. And uh, we had um, a project on uh, aerial mobility. And uh, this project consists of uh, two sub-projects. The first one uh, is about the certification center. We are in cooperation with the Ross Aviation. And we want to get accredited, so to say, or certified uh, in autumn. Uh, we are doing only unmanned aerial vehicles. So up to one ton. And the second sub-project is the Aviation Training Center. It's already existent uh, in our institute, uh, the Moscow Aviation Institute. But we also have to develop it further. We hope that when the experimental legal framework is ready, we'll be ready for it as well. We also have some additional training programs. We train operators, we provide with the technical training as well as practical training on one of our airfields. So we've been working and drafting the documents to become the participants of the experimental legal framework. So once again, I'd like to say that we support this project. Why? Uh, because we believe that this is a competitive advantage of Skolkovo because uh, there are two challenges addressed. First, this is about real business. And secondly, this is about increased uh, safety requirements and uh, integration, taking into account the urban area that um, the vehicles will be operating above. So there should be a jolt because be without this, the market cannot develop on its own. We calculated that if we don't change anything, if we don't give an impetus to this process, then 
We will go from 2% to 0.8 or 6%. So this is a zero trend for us. We need to train people to be able to start working in this new market. And we believe that Skolkovo presents a very good opportunity in this respect. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Let us give the speakers a round of applause. To sum up our session today, I'd like to say that uh, first, I'm thankful to all the speakers. So there is, um, there was uh, a very important word mentioned, uh, stimulus or impetus. I think that uh, this is indeed a very important one, and I think that all our speakers have uh, this impetus. On behalf of the government of Moscow, city of Moscow, I invite you to come to our um, stand, our booth, uh, there is a large uh, glass building, and you will see the word Moscow written there. So uh, there you'll find all the projects and some bonuses and support measures, not only in the field of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, but also grants, supporting tools, etc. You can uh, make yourself familiar with all this, and today we will launch the landing, and we uh, will be very much looking forward to your applications. Our team is present in Skolkovo today, so please reach out to us and we'll be ready to discuss it. Thank you. Сделан из старых забытых вещей Из ночи и дня без обмана Из порванных струн и разбитых идей Из холода и тумана Ты соткан из дыма И верных друзей И разных незыблемых истин Я с горей радости света теней А может, из чьей-нибудь мысли Ты сделан из так ненужных вещей, оставленных кем-то на входе. Ты сделан из очень хороших людей.
МТС Стартап Хаб. Работа с реальным бизнес-заказчиком МТС. Доступ к ресурсам самого крупного телеком-бренда в России. Не можешь поверить? А в твой стартап обязательно поверят. У нас есть все, что тебе понадобится. Ресурсы, клиенты, технологии, каналы продаж. Мы оценим твой продукт, правильно применим в своем бизнесе и масштабируем на мировой рынок. МТС Стартап Хаб ждет тебя и твоих нереальных бизнес-идей. ВК-звонки доступны везде и без ограничений. В 4К и с активным шумоподавлением. Будьте всегда на связи в ВК-звонках. Встречайте приложение ВК-клипы. Удобный видеоредактор. Уникальные маски и эффекты. И стильные фильтры для обработки. Еще быстрее, проще, вертикальнее. Теперь в отдельном приложении. ВК-клипы. Место встречи талантов. Классно шьешь, варишь, печешь и вообще что-то производишь в Москве? Тогда сейчас самое время поверить в то, что ты делаешь, заявить о себе и занять свое место на рынке, пока другие не заняли. Смотри, это твоя дверь в новый мир. Открывай и узнай, чем мы можем тебе помочь. Москва 24 для бизнеса. Давай с нами. Журнал «Эксперт» — это российский и международный бизнес, общественно-политические процессы, аналитика и прогнозы, рейтинги и интервью. Специальные условия на подписку на сайте expert.ru. «Эксперт» — настоящий деловой журнал.